Hello and welcome back to my channel. So as the title suggests, today I'm going to do a quick, or I say quick, um, because there's only a few questions, but I'm going to do a quick Q&A for you. So I asked for some questions over on Instagram, I've got them here in front of me, so I thought I would just rattle off down through them and try to answer them. It's a real mixed bunch, so some things you may be interested in, others you may not, but I hope you enjoy this video. So the first question says, Favourite things to do in the southwest. So obviously I'm from the southwest um, of the U of England, the UK. Um, so things that I love to do in the southwest. I love the beaches, or at least coastal walks. I think that we've got some of the prettiest coastal towns. Places like Watchet. I really love Watchet. I love Blue Anchor, all down that coast. The only thing I would say is that the beaches aren't really play worthy if you're going with families. I mean, you could obviously still go, but bear in mind that a lot of them are muddy, they've got oil. They're not the best, but the actual coastal towns themselves are really pretty and really lovely. So I definitely say those. I love Clavelli. That is just a pretty special place to me. I really do love Clavelli. I'd love to go back there again soon. And maybe I could vlog the trip, maybe. Yeah, so I really like Clavelli. Where else? Lyme Regis is another really nice place. And then switch into sort of the other side of the coast. Places like um, Lulworth Cove. That's stunning. That's another place I'd quite like to go back to. Um, and obviously Durdle Doors just down the coast from there. Yeah, and Lulworth Cove and that really... To be fair, on a sunny day, you would honestly think you were abroad. It looks that beautiful. So definitely places like that, beach-wise. Obviously, um, Yeovilton Fleet Air Arm Museum, that's really good. Plymouth Aquarium, I love Plymouth Aquarium. Yeah, so many different places, it's hard to, uh, to say. But even just, like, walking on the hills or in the countryside, there's so many good walks in the area. Um, obviously, Trix is or Trixie's birthday vlog, was at Tar Steps and Blue Anchor, um, which I meant, just mentioned. So that was a really lovely day out. And just, there's so many hidden gems. It's definitely worth doing your research and seeing, finding things that you're into because there's something for everyone, basically. Favourite places for a UK staycation? I've stayed quite a bit in York. York is really pretty. Lincoln would be another really good one. As would Bath, which is, you know, not too far, it's just down the road from me. That's a really nice place to stay. Definitely, I think, a lot of northern places are really pretty. I don't know if it's because down south I just do day trips, so I don't really take any notice about staycation ideas down this way. I tend to head north when everyone else is heading south and the motorway is chock-a-block. How many tattoos and piercings do you, do you have and would you like to have more? So I've got one tattoo and I've got uh, two sets of piercings. I've got two um, in each ear. So obviously my tattoo, oh, I'm sure many of you have seen in photos. Um, but of course, can I show it around that far? There we go. Um, it's a heart with a spitfire. Would I like more tattoos? Absolutely. I've got a couple of designs um, in mind. I'm just saving the money. Only small ones. I, I'm not one of those people that likes a big design. Um, but I would quite like something maybe on the back of my neck. So yeah, I'm definitely open to getting more tattoos. Piercing wise, I would quite like to get my belly button done. I've wanted to get that done for years, but I've always chickened out of that. And I quite like the idea of getting another piercing somewhere higher up on my ear but I'm just not too sure whether it will affect my hearing aids so I have held off on that for now to do a little bit more research and see if anybody that wears hearing aids has had the top of their ear done and whether it's affected them because I don't want something bashing against my hearing aid all the time because that would just annoy me. What got you interested in aviation? I knew this one would crop up. The second I put the uh, question box on my stories I knew that I would get something aviation related um, and basically aviation has always been there in terms of my life. My dad was in the RAF and he left before they had me um, 
so I'm not an, I'm not an RAF child or anything I didn't go from base to base um, but I think there is that element of RAF that's always been in him ever since um, and previous to that and post that he used to love going to bases and to air shows and things and doing aviation photography so I've kind of inadvertently as much as growing up I didn't want to I have kind of followed in his footsteps so yeah I went to my first air show when I was six weeks old and saw well obviously I, I don't remember it but the highlight of that show was the Tomcat which is obviously in the original Top Gun and yeah I've been going ever since 2020 was the only year that I hadn't been to an air show for obvious reasons so yeah I did miss it that year that is for sure but I did fit in a few base visits and things in between the lockdown so it wasn't all bad but yeah I love anything aviation whether it's civilian, military, fast jet, prop, warbirds, you name it I could just sit and watch it all but the F-35 and the wing walkers I'm sorry they're just they're not for me especially the F-35 but that is a whole different story next up what did you want to be when you grew up so this is um also sticking with the aviation theme because I actually wanted to be an air hostess or air cabin crew or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, from going on holidays from an early age I always wanted to be one of those girls in the plane with their trolleys walking up and down and I very nearly did do it and I looked at the specs and everything and I was just at the time slightly too short for the company that I wanted to work for. In hindsight I probably should have shopped around a bit and looked at other companies specs um, and gone for it. I do slightly regret not going for it but I feel like I'm now where I'm meant to be and yeah I'm happy. What TV shows are you watching at the moment? Well I seemingly have started several and not finished any um, so I'm still watching Bridgerton. I've just finished season two of Emily in Paris I am watching um, The Family Di Diaries with Billy and Greg. I haven't caught up on Towie in such a long time, but I think I'm like two series behind, but I do normally watch Towie. 22 Kids and Counting, I love the Radford family. I'm still watching that, I'm still catching up with that at the minute. I feel like there's one more. Oh, I've just started Hunted as well um, on Channel 4. I love Hunted and I'm so glad it's back. I was worried that post-Covid they wouldn't be able to bring it back Oh, excuse me. Um, so I'm so pleased that they have managed to, although I'm sad that it's not the original team. Like, I've only watched two episodes, one or two episodes, I think, so far, um, and it's not the same. I'm not gelling with the new team of hunters, if you like. So hopefully it gets better as it goes on. So yeah, that's what I'm watching at the moment. Obviously, I still always watch EastEnders, although I'm about three weeks behind on that as well. So I feel like I need like a day in my pyjamas, under a duvet, to just catch up with everything. But yeah, maybe when it starts to rain. It's going to rain in a couple of days, so hopefully on a rainy day I can just snuggle down with tricks and we can watch TV all day. <laughs> Next question. What did you think of Top Gun Maverick? Now obviously I don't want to give any spoilers because I've been there, I was out of my group of um, friends and people I know, I was one of the last to see it um, and they all kept trying to start discussions and they wanted, not necessarily to spoil it for me but they wanted to talk between themselves um, and I was kind of stopping that because I hadn't seen it but all I will say is it's really good yeah really really good there are obviously some things that from my perspective I'm like yeah that 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 plane wouldn't do that or you know that's not quite right but on the heart that's just me being geeky I guess but on the whole it is really good and I can't wait to see it again actually I'd love to go back and see it in the cinema maybe one more time and just take more of it in because I think the first time you see it it's just very much I was so glued to the planes that I don't think I really took much in so I would like to go back and maybe take more note of the storyline a bit more but yeah if you haven't seen it go and see it what advice would you give to someone starting over again with their life now obviously this probably stems from the fact that I've moved back home again I would just say 
if that's what you feel you have to do for whatever reason you feel that you need to start again whether it's to move away from certain people or a certain lifestyle make that break and do it because you can't it's a hard one to discuss but you can't stay in a situation where either you're not happy or you're not making somebody else happy and the situation just isn't right. Life is too short to be unhappy. I definitely say though, try and make sure that you've got a good support system around you or people that you can turn to. It's a difficult path to tread, especially the older you get, I find as well. I, I've obviously started over again before, back like a boomerang, that's what I am. But I found it so much more difficult this time round being older because so many people my age you know I'd go on Facebook and everybody's like oh I'm engaged or oh, I'm having a baby you know this and that I've bought a house I've got you know I've got a dog and obviously I, I've got tricks um so I've done that bit but all these different things of people getting on in their life and that's great but it's also very draining when you're not in that place and I think definitely having somebody to talk to is really really important um, for your mental health, for your sanity. I was really lucky that I did have a great support system um, and I also had, or I didn't have, I still have, um, a friend that was going through a breakup pretty much at a similar time, um, literally days apart. Um, unknowingly to me as well, neither of of us knew about the other one's situation on that score it was only that they sent me a message saying they were feeling really low and really down and I said what's that then it come out they were like oh me and so and so split up um I've moved back home and I literally just turned around and was just like snap and um so having that person there that was kind of going through similar did help um but I did have some really great people around that really got me through it too. And I think it's all about having those different people. You know, I had obviously this friend that um, was kind of going through the motions in a similar way that I was. I had people that were there um, to support me and to allow me to talk to them about how I'm feeling, about anything on my mind. Um, those that took me out of the house, I think that was a really big thing. I was starting to get in on myself a bit um, and I think people realised that and so they came and took me out, whether it was to the beach or to a museum or just, you know, into town for a bit. They kind of made me get out of the house and made me essentially put one foot in front of the other, you know, going out for like drinks and stuff, just literally just for a little catch up and a good laugh. Just those few hours just meant that I wasn't, you know, coming home from work, going up to my room and staying there until I go to work again. It kind of... Um, spurred me on to keep going and I think that really really helped as well but yeah just main piece of advice if, if you think you're doing the right thing um, which you probably are um, for you to have got to that point where you feel you need to start over again then just stick with it it is hard um, it's very emotional but it's worth it in the long run and I'm sure you will be a lot happier. Where would your dream holiday be? So many dream holidays right now. I'd love to go back to Malta. That will always be one of my dream destinations. I've been so many times that it's probably not classed as a dream. It's like more of a reality. I've been there, done it all. But there is just something that draws me back to the island each time. And I just love it. And even to the point that... Um, someone can post a photo or there'll be an advert on the TV and I'll just instantly recognise it and just wish that I was back there. Yeah, I absolutely love, I love the island, I love the people, I love the culture. Yeah, I just love it all. So that would definitely be one. But YouTube has really been <laughs> making me want to go to the Maldives recently because obviously quite a few 
YouTubers have been there with certain brands. I don't know how I would get on being in the Maldives, but it just looks absolutely spectacular. Um, and the thought that you can swim alongside all these different animals in a natural environment, it's not like you're going to um, certain animal parks where they're kept in captivity. These are just wild animals and one morning you might wake up and there'll be a turtle at your feet or something, you know? Um, so yeah, it looks absolutely amazing and it is making me want to go there, I must say watching all these videos recently um so yeah i'd probably say that as well but also like there's so many places on my bucket list you know places like finland i've always wanted to go to finland to one of those um igloos and see the northern lights um but that is expensive like i'm not gonna lie i've got expensive taste um but even places like italy I really want to go to Belgium, to Germany. I wouldn't mind going to Paris or something just to say I've been like for a weekend or something. And I need to get over to Ireland as well because I feel like that's the, it's now like the last place in the UK that I need to do is to go to Ireland. So who knows? It's like a never ending bucket list, isn't it really? Last question is who is your role model? Oh my gosh. To be fair, I have several different role models for different ones, but I would say my overall role model would actually probably be my nan. She is an inspiration, she always has been to me, I'm hoping I don't get tearful talking about her. But she married young, and whilst I didn't marry young, I was with somebody for a long time very young, and she did have kids with her husband, and then she fled. It's so hard to talk about. There's some aspects of her life that are very, very different and there's some aspects of her life that have been similar to mine and I think that's why I find her such a role model. But yeah, she fled and brought her kids down to Somerset and started again, started a whole new life um, hidden down here in deepest, darkest Somerset in a tiny village that you didn't really have a hope in hell of finding and I know that life before she fled and after she fled I know life was very tough and I know that money was very scarce but she always managed to struggle through and she always did it with a smile on her face and I think that is the biggest thing for me that I've taken from her is finding <coughs> god is finding happiness and things that make you smile daily in the simplest simplest of ways you know you don't need to spend an absolute fortune um to be happy and she is living proof of that she started again and she found happiness and it was just so loving and so caring and yeah the best and also i got on with her so so well like we were the closest you could probably possibly be i think um, there was only one thing that we weren't close on, in a way, and that was her love of bake. I can't bake. I Like, she tried to teach me, and I can't bake. I don't have the patience, I don't have the skill. Probably even five-year-olds can bake better than me. I just can't get my cakes to rise, for starters. We had this, we've got the same love of, or had the same love of books. You know, I used to get books from the charity shop. Um, very similar to like the Shipyard Girls and other ones that I've mentioned either here or on my blog. And I would read it and then pass it on to her and she would read it and then, you know, we'd talk about it like our own little book club and... Even... <clears throat> even when it come to like dress sense, um, I wouldn't mean that we'd necessarily wear the same things because she didn't dress young and I didn't dress like a granny um but the styles that I liked were kind of what she wore when she was my age so yeah I had like the biggest bond with her <clears throat> definitely had the biggest bond with her and probably spent the most time with her as well um <clears throat> 
but yeah she found happiness and was happy for very many years um until she was widowed and then I think that showed me as well that life still goes on and yeah she has had her struggles but no matter what she's always found that thing that keeps her going whether it was her kids when they were young um then her grandchildren you know her garden like there was always something that kept her going that kept her strong that gave her that motivation that you know that get up and go um and to me she was always that person that proved you don't need a man if she wanted to wallpaper that front room she'd get up and wallpaper it if she needed to rewire a plug that's exactly what she would do you know um she never she never believed that anything was man's work if it needed doing and it was a woman that was the only one there that could do it then that woman would do it in her eyes she was truly an inspiration and has always been my role model I think um, and I know I'm talking like she's not here anymore I'm probably on YouTube I haven't addressed it um, but she has late stage dementia <coughs> which is why my voice keeps going because it is a very sore subject um, and She no longer really um, recognises who people are. Um, she does the oddest of things now, which I know people would laugh at, but when it's your loved one, it is so hard. Um, and you've just got to watch her like a hawk all the time. Um, some days she recognises me, other days she doesn't have a clue who I am. Um, some days she sees me as an adult, other days she sees me as a child. Um, which can pose its own troubles as well because she can get quite agitated. Say if I go in the kitchen or near the cooker um, or things like that because her brain is processing as if it's like... 10 15 years ago, um, and even with Trix, bless her, Trix doesn't know how to take her anymore. Trix gets herself in such a state, um, because Nan talks to her like she's a child and will tell her off for uh, you know playing with her toys essentially because Nan thinks she's just being destructive and she's not, it's her toys, you know, she can play with them. Um, So yeah, it's a very difficult path to tread. Whilst it sounds like I'm saying that she's already gone, in body she hasn't, but in mind and spirit she kind of has. Um, but yeah, that's a whole different story. And maybe one day when I don't get so tearful, um, I'll sit down and talk a little bit more about it maybe. Um, and maybe that can help others um, because it is a very lonely, long and difficult journey um, that we are currently on and we have been on for quite a while and anyone that's been through anything similar will obviously know that and to anyone going through it right now like, like we are as a family then my heart does go out to you because nothing in this world can prepare you for what is happening um yeah so that is my role model that went down a bit of a deep and dark um journey then didn't it um but that also brings me to the end of the questions i'm going to answer today 
I will probably do another one of these at some point. So if you have any further questions then feel free to leave them down below or message me with them and I will try my best to answer them next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found a little bit more out about me as well because these are a great way of doing that. And please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.